Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us once again. This is Gateway Office Hours. I'm your host, Ben Larson, and I'm here with my co-founder, Carter Laren. And this week, I'm going to actually remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, download our podcast, wherever you want to consume it, um, because it's all about consistent consumption. Am I right? You now keep your job as the introduction host. For yes. The show. And none of you Thank tweet, you. but if you do, go to follow us on Twitter <laughs> at GTWI Inc. And most important, us. just subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's all we care about right now. We're done. <laughs> we got some guy here today, though. We do. Um, thank you for dressing up, Brandon David. I wore my dress shirt for you guys. It um, is. No, you guys look sharp, though. You, know, you, you're, you, uh, it's part of the job. This is the most dressed up I've actually seen you. So I, I, I take that as a tremendous compliment. It is. Yeah. It is a compliment. I pride myself yeah. on being the most casual person in the room because I think it catches people off guard. You know? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. <not> so <laughs> before we get too deep into this, because I have a feeling this conversation is going to have an opportunity to derail <laughs> several times. Um, Brandon David, the host of Infused, the web show. Also, Investing in Cannabis, the podcast, formerly a web show, and Correct. just longtime friend of Gateway. You were one of the first people to interview us when we came on the scene. You were also the third guest of Gateway Office Hours. We're now Actually, he co-hosted when you abandoned me, on, remember? Yes, one of the many times, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Probably you, the first time you I You let abandoned. me ask questions, I think. Yeah. 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 So, and, and you interviewed, he like did... Uh, a web series on each of the gateway companies for cohort one, I think. That's fantastic. Right? Yeah. I did. We did a couple for two as well. Yeah. We did good. We did somatic. Yeah. Basically, mm. like anything that's consumer facing and people like. Save your metal footage. Your your footage with Marshall, who's like. Can we just talk about almost a billionaire. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. I just want to look. <laughs> like how? Am I allowed to cuss on? This oh, it's show? it's like, a market cap only of eight hundred and forty three million now, so he's close. Yeah. Wasn't it like 900 yesterday? Yeah, I know. It went down a little bit. If I was doing this interview, I would say, like, how lucky do you guys feel? I feel super lucky. Part of this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I feel super lucky. Um, we're lucky to have you awesome a part guy. of it, too, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're okay. He was, a, okay. he was one of the top rated mentors, the first <laughs> no, cohort. No, I, I think I was the, the top rated mentor. Oh. Yeah, I think you were. So you have a piece Everyone of loves you, man. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't think everybody loves well, me. Well, everyone worth I love you, too, Carter. Aw. Yeah. We can All right. Make out <laughs> That's a separate show. What was this um, show going to be about? We're not just going to like, like joke around for an hour. You guys are supposed are to have the question. No, there is, is a like... show here. So <laughs> there, there is a show. I'm not sure what it is. Um, we thought, so we're actually, I've been quite impressed actually with how much Infuse has grown. Well, I see, I thought was super cool. And then you, you kind of, I won't say pivoted, but added Infused on as a show. Um, and Ben and I were talking when we realized, look, a lot of founders are trying to do this kind of social media outreach or maybe blogs that they write or videos or podcasts that they do. Um, it's not their, you know, raison d'etre as it is for you, but it's like part of their business, right? What and, and, huh? What was, I think what that was just, like core competency. Their, that's, their that's reason how I of existence. It. Context. Right, <laughs> right? so. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you I use these work terms that no one knows. <laughs> it's, uh, Keep I don't going, know. How keep do I going, say it? Keep going, keep going. Going. Thank you, <laughs> Michael. Do you know what it is? Right? Keep going, See? Keep going. Say yeah. Say. Go ahead. Do you know what it is? We. 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 He said. All right. See. So Michael knows. Okay. I'm not crazy. Anyway, you. Uh, you've you've built a lot, and and we you know just watching the number of people that are following, uh, infused and I C, we thought it would be good to have you in and just kind of talk about that journey, and then we can kind of ask get into some specific questions about what you did. So why don't you just start off by telling us why do you start at IC in the first place? And we can take it from there. Let's see. I, um, I'm obsessed with the art of the interview. I really am. Like the way that things are structured. I'm a big fan of Oprah and Anderson Cooper and Charlie Rose. And like I watch all these people. Like I pay attention. Um, and the one thing that they do is they ask good questions and then they shut up. Um, and that's something that I've tried to learn to do is like really let the guests sort of mm. own it. You know, people are here to listen to the guests, learn about the guests. So I really learned this art originally from Jason Calacanis. A lot of people know is a big angel investor. Great interviewer. Incredible interviewer. Yeah. Does this week in startups, which I worked on for a long time. Also does the launch festival, which does these big like sweeping interviews with Elon Musk and Tim Draper and like these, these tech giants. Um, so my job for a long time was to pick, 
book those people, get them to come and let Jason interview them. And then I would also like outline the talk sometimes. You know, I would like look at the content and what should we ask? And then Jason would rip it all up and we would argue about it. But that's just, for another time. <laughs> that's just Jason. That's just Jason. Yeah. Uh, but I learned a tremendous amount from Jason about interviewing people, also about evaluating companies. So when I was leaving Jason, what I was thinking about is, you know, what, what did I take from this experience and how do I apply it somewhere else? Much like you guys did with Adeo and, and Founders Institute too. And uh, I thought, well, there's this new sort of burgeoning industry and the combination of cannabis and technology is really what brought me in. The cannabis industry lasted, er, has existed in California since basically 1996, much before that, but let's call it 1996. And uh, I was a, a big cannabis consumer for a long time, but didn't really care about the cannabis, the business of cannabis because Frankly, there was no business of cannabis, right. you know. Um, I wasn't interested in going to jail and being raided and all those good things. So um, when technology came into it, I got really interested because that was my background. And really the impetus, I like that word, by the way, impetus, a good for one. investing in I don't know, Ben, do you know what that means? I do know it. All it's, right. it's at least in English. It's at least I've used it before in a sentence. <laughs> You should. I'm such an asshole. Should I give Mike a, a mic, too, by the way. He, we he tried to give him a mic. Yeah, he doesn't want a mic. <laughs> It's, uh, it is what it is. So the impetus for investing in cannabis really came out of conversations with David Hua of Meadow. Mm -hmm. um, I started asking him questions. He was still in Y Combinator, and it was a big deal for me that somebody uh, in the cannabis industry was in Y Combinator. Um, and so I wanted to ask him a ton of questions about that. I was really interested. I just sent him a cold email like, hey, man, I think what you're doing. Oh, you really didn't cool. know him previously? I didn't know. Him. I just oh. sent him a cold email, which is a lesson for anybody out there to send cold emails they work. That's part of our strategy, too. We can talk about that in a little while, but a lot of cold emails. So uh, Hua was very nice, and he said, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. Um, why don't you come to our office? We just got an office today. And so I went down to Soma. It was totally empty. It's now used for an event space and really nice, but it was totally empty, just like bare bones. And uh, we just smoked a couple joints, and he told me about his experience with Y Combinator. And, you know, I asked him a lot of questions, mostly that I had learned from listening to Jason ask founders. Um, and uh, I thought, hey, this would be kind of cool, like if we publish this, you know, if we put this in the world. And he was like, okay, fine, but like go do a couple more so you don't suck when you <laughs> interview me. You know, like go do a couple first. And I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. And so I did a couple other interviews. So you came to Gateway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you guys are. I'm like 24 or yeah, something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something I'm like kidding. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of how it started. Um, investing in cannabis has been a tremendous run. It's given me such a great knowledge of the industry just by asking questions. And the other thing I learned in interviewing is you can never really ask a stupid question because the audience, somebody in the audience, or probably most people, don't know the answer to that question either. Mm -hmm. So actually playing dumb can kind of help the, the rapport a little bit. More French words, rapport. Yeah, no. no, no. Um, I'm good I'm at just playing dumb, though. This you is wanna, great. Wanna ask another question or no, I no. I, I could talk for the whole hour. No, this I'm aware hard. of that. So yeah. let's... Yeah, let's direct it just a little bit. <laughs> so um, you did IC. For how long did you do IC? Well, and IC still lives, even though it's sure, not Sure, but before you started Infused, I guess. Yeah, it was about a year and a half. Okay. We did IC. And, uh, well, was it every week, or what was the... It was every week, although sometimes we had guests like not show up, and you know, shit happens. But yeah, okay. mostly every week. And um, what we determined at the end of that period, this would have been December of this last year, was that the audience for investing in cannabis was very devout, loved what we were doing, were highly engaged, but it was still a pretty small community. Mm -hmm. um, it was investors, it was founders, it was entrepreneurs, you know, people that just were interested in cannabis, right? Yeah. Um, but they were not people that just consumed cannabis and they weren't lifestyle people. And so we kind of made the decision to, at that point, like say, okay, how do we pivot here how do we keep doing what we love doing? Again, I just love to interview people. Uh, and how do we translate that into a much bigger audience? Um, and the obvious transition was in consumption, in consumer. So wait, let's pause there for a minute because was your goal just, you and I talked about authenticity off camera earlier. Um, was the goal a bigger audience or was the goal to do something that was more in line with what you wanted to be doing? Because you have a, I mean, you work at OnFleet. It's not like you, rely on IC or infuse for income. That's uh, correct. Yeah. Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> we make a little bit of money, but it's a good thing that I still have a job. Yes. yes that's <laughs> right. True. So um, what was the what was the 
process of even like having that conversation in the first place? It was like, our audience is too small, it needs to be bigger, or was it something else? Well, uh, it was kind of a combination. Yes, the audience was too small. And we started thinking to ourselves like, where does it go from here? If we want sponsors, if we want to make this a big business. So you did want to make a business out of it and you didn't have the audience size for it. Yeah, Okay. absolutely, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about the sponsorship model, which is not a great way to make money to begin with, but we do have a few sponsors. Uh, they're only interested in impressions and views and brand reach and which right. obviously, you know. Mm -hmm. So investing in cannabis while it had a very targeted market and maybe we could have got like, I don't know, MailChimp or something, you know, or like Audible, like somebody that sponsors all the business. Like they're, the consumer brands were not interested in basically people like yourself. No offense. Yeah. No, they shouldn't yeah. be. They shouldn't be, right? Right, yeah. Um, but part of that also was creatively. Um, and artistically, we started doing things that were a little more documentary based. So we would go into a lab or we would go to a grow or we would be on site somewhere and then that format didn't really feel like it it messed with a podcast about business. It was mm -hmm. more about the people and the community, which is very indicative of how cannabis is. That's mm -hmm. one thing that we realized too, is that a lot of people are in this as a lifestyle business. I love the train, by the way. I miss the train. <laughs> yeah, the train is uh, a recurring guest. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, business, uh, cannabis is, in large part is a lifestyle business, especially today. If you're in it to make a lot of money, you're in the wrong business, right? That, I shouldn't it's, say that to no, two no, of you, no, no, no. but that's <laughs> mostly how it is. No, it's true, and I, and I think uh, there is a misconception about like, there's, it's a cash cow and everything, you t everything that touches cannabis uh, makes you wealthy. That's certainly not true. And frankly, we are in it for the money partially because we're investors, but we're not. We could be investors in anything. We're in it for other reasons besides the money. And I think that that kind of needs to be true no matter what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you have to pay like 30% more in taxes. Right. It's yeah, basically exactly. give or take. That's right. that's the number, right? Yeah. How could you ever have a business where you, you know, right. anyway. No one wants to do yeah. that. You better really, really yeah. love edibles. Yeah. You know? So. <laughs> <laughs> Most and good <laughs> does make great edibles. Nice, nice way to just work that in there. That was awesome. So I love the good guys, by the way. Like, they're my friends. Like they just hang out at my house. Like, yeah. So okay, so you you were let's let's get back to your story because we're derailing you. So you As expected. yeah, that's kind of what this show's about. So, right? Yes, like, okay, totally. Cool. So you yeah. wanted to. So you had these issues with IC. You you wanted to, a bigger audience, and you didn't feel like the. Format of the shows freedom. was moving in a direction. I wanted more freedom. I wanted okay. to do more documentary stuff. I wanted to do more fun stuff. I wanted to do stuff that wasn't necessarily focused on making a lot of money. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And? And? Then what happened, Brandon? <laughs> we pissed and moaned for a long time about what to call it. Uh, <laughs> we went through a lot of different ideas. The one that was probably closest, and I'm so glad it's not named this, but was Lucid. We, mm. we thought about lucid. Oh. If for you a do long an time. LSD show, though, that would be <laughs> fucking awesome. Investing in, in acid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like lucid is a great Rails, name guys. For like, Rails. Oh, that was funny. That was, that was good. Yeah. No, um, I, anyway. <laughs> I would watch that show. So it Honest? also allowed us to do just shorter form stuff, which was important, too. And yep. if you're talking about building an audience, a combination of longer form stuff that people can sink their teeth into mm. and shorter form stuff that they can share with their friends and, and sort of take in very quickly is important. That mix is really important. So, so check one where we're failing. No, no, this is good because I want to ask, are you, were you um, filming long form stuff and cutting it up and sharing short form version, like parts of it, or were you intentionally like doing just short form content? So we did that originally. Um, director uh, Jacob, mm -hmm. who is incredibly talented. Uh, we started with him just like cutting up maybe a minute or 90 second clips. Uh, and we still do that sometimes, maybe as like a trailer or a teaser. Um, we did that particularly well with the seniors documentary that came out uh, about a month ago mm -hmm. or three weeks ago now. Um, but also just me, just more of me sort of being a goofball and doing some reviews and talking about my day. I do a sort of a reoccurring thing called uh, called robe talk, which is like I sit in a robe and just basically pontificate sometimes about cannabis, sometimes about other things, you know. Um, and so it's it's more freedom. It really is. It's sort of like stretched the outline of what we're capable of doing. Yeah. What Here. just small dig in a little bit. Why the robe? Why the robe? Um, well, we talked about me being casual mm -hmm. uh, a little bit earlier, and it just so happens that that's the time of the day where I kind of have those kind of thoughts, right. where it's I want to share people with the day, yeah. like sort of starts in the shower, and then, you know, the robe <laughs> is just something easy to... Well, thank you for not starting it in the Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a different show. Do you want me to go deep? Like, 
I want you to go deep because I'm wondering if you like, really want to be Hugh that's Hefner. That's what we're talking about, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, if by Hugh Hefner, you mean like a completely irrelevant empire and, you know. No, no I mean like Blade a very Blade. wealthy man with a mansion and a robe. <laughs> Those things sound great. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Um, we were talking about Infused. Yes. Yeah. Well, we were talking about actually you in the shower, which I was trying to move away from, but... Ben, ben was asking, so go no, ahead. No, no, no. Actually, this morning in the shower, I was watching or listening to last week's episode. Which oh, was, there you go. That was good. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. So this, the, the robe came from you. Wanted, that was just the time in the day that you were more casual and blah, blah, blah. Then you said, do you want to, you want to go deep? Like, that was a teaser for something. It worked. My interest is peaked. Like, what, what were you going to uh, say? I mean, this is also kind of another just social media tip. Like, people do things that are outrageous, right? right. Um, and wearing a robe is a really easy way to catch someone's eye. Um, mm. I have like this really nice like chest hair kind of like and it, it's appealing. It's so you know? good. Um, and so I'm never gonna get uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, if you get people to laugh, you can get them to listen. Right. Honestly, that's really the key. And uh, that was good. Like write that down. Yeah. If you get people yeah. to laugh, yeah. give people we'll, to listen. we'll cut it up and put it in a little clip. The so, audience yeah. is writing yeah. it down. Right Sorry. there, that camera right there. Yeah. Um, no, but Infused has the response has been tremendous. We knew that it would be bigger. Um, because we're tackling topics that everybody deals with. And that's really the key, is to sort of show people how they normalize cannabis into their life. So how does it help you with your health? How does it help you with wellness? We did a thing on creativity, you know, can it make you more creative? We did a 420 games thing last week. Uh, we did a seniors segment, which is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. The response to that probably has been bigger than any of the other iTunes stuff. Uh, way, way bigger than uh, I would have imagined. The, and what I've learned from that is that Facebook is, uh, has a lot of seniors on it. Really? Yeah. I There's, wouldn't have guessed that. I, I didn't either. Um, but then it kind of makes sense. Like, all of the kids that were on Facebook have left Facebook because their parents are there now. That I know. Um, yeah. Well, and those parents are getting older, right? I mean, like, I my parents so. are yeah. on Facebook. And like, yeah, my parents are on Facebook too. Sixties, you know, whatever. Yeah. So that's a senior, and um, no, I was fascinated by how many people reached out and said, "Oh my God!" Like I used to smoke weed in the sixties, but I don't know how to start again. Is it really strong? And I was like, "Yes." And um, <laughs> yes, it is very <laughs> strong. <laughs> but and then other people are like, "You don't know what you're talking about." I smoke weed every day. I'm seventy three. You know, like a really, really opinionated segment. And I guess I hit kind of a hot spot there. I mean, the polarization is generally a good sign, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing with normalization is if you can show cannabis in an environment where cannabis is not supposed to be or would not have been previously, it does really well. Yeah. Like I would love to do a segment like in line at TSA. You know, like that would be like smoking think, yeah. a joint I in the airport. That might end differently you than you one. would want. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Go so ahead. let's so, uh, let's get into a few of the I won't call them hacks, but tips about how to how to grow. And you mentioned a couple things so far. You've mentioned kind of being outrageous, making people laugh. You've also mentioned the shorter form content being more consumable. Um, but you alluded to more information about cold emails. Mm. Um, mm. So how did you use cold emails to so do anything? I mean, this is not just a media tip or social media tip. Like this is just a life tip. Okay. Not even business or anything else like that. Like if you have an interest in someone and what they're doing, send them a cold email. Like I know very few people that are too busy or too famous to respond to a cold email. I mean, I've cold emailed like the founder of Netflix and you know, like, uh, hey, like Reed Hoffman of LinkedIn, like will you have a 15 minute phone call with me? And he's like, absolutely not. But he responded, <laughs> right? And like, and, like, and like, that's a, that's a thing, you know? Like, sure. Um, and if you are persistent, and it appears that you'll add value. I mean, you guys are investors. So like if someone emails you with a cool company and they're like, hey, take a look at this. I think it really fits in your wheelhouse. You're going to respond. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You're going to be like, yeah. oh, that's kind of interesting. Yes, that's your job. Um, but you kind of have to find like what everybody's looking for in their day. Right. You know, if you're emailing a recruiter, you know, <laughs> they're looking for <laughs> candidates, you know. And, and if you start thinking about it like that, not so much about you, but what they're interested in. Cold emails are, it's like a secret weapon that nobody wants to do. Everybody's too nervous to, Why do you think to that send is? cold emails. I think mm. that there's a fear of rejection in life, right? Mm. Um, which is also kind of a good tip. I like have no dignity or shame or like anything like that. Like I'm not nervous 
most of the time. And I think that helps a lot too when people see you're comfortable in a, in a situation, they, they want to watch. People want to be around people that are comfortable in their own skin. Sure, yeah. that makes sense. And I guess if you approach uh, a cold conversation with the attitude that you ought to be having the conversation Absolutely. that comes through. Act like you've been there, you right. know? Like if you ever walk into like a really fancy hotel in the lobby of a fancy right. hotel, like the people that work there look at the way you act. Yeah. And if you act like you shouldn't be there, they're going to ask you to leave. Oh, no. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Okay, so you've you've switched now to in not switched. You've added on Infuse. Tell so us actually, Infuse, what Infuse. happened is we did we pivoted, and I wrote a whole article about why why we were pivoting and why we we're going to go to Infuse. And then it was not too long after that we got a lot of response that said, "What happened to investing in cannabis?" Right. I love the IC content. I was learning from it. Mm -hmm. Again, there was that really devoted sort of core crowd, which I was a little concerned about alienating. Um, and then they said, "Bring it back." Um, what I found also is that a lot of people were listening to it. Mm -hmm as opposed to watching it. Right. Um, it's really, really information dense. Yep. And so I was like, cool, I can just do it audio and we'll do the documentaries for infused video. It turned out pretty nicely. Yeah, and the, it's a lot easier to make an audio podcast than it is to worry about the video. It's much less impactful, yeah. I mean, we spent maybe 20 or 30 minutes here like right. trying to get ready and on set and right. do a sound right. check. And, and this is a permanent like, set. It still takes a while. This is a permanent set, yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff we were doing was on set, you know, mm -hmm. on yeah. location, stuff like that. Doing an audio podcast, well, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of them, so sure. it's a little well, you can just do them at this over point, the phone half the time. You could do right? it over the phone. That's a mm. little okay. What yeah. you should do is if you're going to do a Google Hangout, you should, like, have them have some kind of headphone. You know, like, a, even, like, an Apple AirPods is better than just using your computer. Um, it turns out pretty well. It's not incredible, but mm -hmm. it's definitely listenable. So. Yeah, and the quality, I mean, so many people do that, I think, the the bar is kind of low for audio quality. Yeah, yeah. And that's not what people are listening to. It. You know, they don't need, like, Apple lossless audio quality right. it's you know they're not listening to this in their car like bumping it you know it's, right. it's like i want to learn something yeah fair enough so we've got how many viewers how how big is is infused now yeah um well the actual following is actually a lot smaller than the views that it retains. Well, you don't have to di disclose any information that you don't want to disclose. I'm an open but. book, Carter. Uh, <laughs> but you know, on Instagram, we probably have a little less than like 10,000 followers, something okay. like that. Which, in by Instagram terms, is not tiny. Bad. No, um, it's not bad. No, it's pretty small by. Instagram I don't use Instagram. Terms. It sounds like it's good enough. Dude, yeah, there's like oh, okay. You know. Ten times what we got. Old people yeah. don't use Instagram. <laughs> You're not old, first of all. He is old. Do not take that away from me. It's all I have. <laughs> you also have this cider that like, uh, looks like you're drinking. I think it's Metamucil. This is, <laughs> this is Yerba Mate, uh, but we didn't want to advertise that. What questions so. you ask me? I don't know. Oh, uh, how many views, viewers, ah, blah, blah, blah. So the yeah. Seniors documentary has about 180,000 views. So that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what we found is that when we strike a chord with someone, they share it. And we see a tremendous amount of sharing and engagement on the stuff that we do well. And so, I mean, if you know anything about social media, basically anytime you engage with anything, it shows it to your audience and that's multiplied. So each time somebody engages, that algorithm realizes, re-realizes, hey, this is important. So it pushes it to more and more people. So right? it seems that's like the, the topics that you're doing with Infused are more shareable and more likely to strike a chord with someone. So the the, sh the amount of sharing has probably increased dramatically compared to IC, right? Absolutely. And we get some of this like, look how cool this is. You know, like when you go do ganja yoga mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, you get high and like work with a stand up comedian, it's a different kind of feel. It's not like, hey, this might help me with my business. This is like, right. oh, this is hilarious. You know, and right. you, oh, it's Friday. Well, know, I just, that, that you know, kind of deal. I'm just having this realization. It's like, I never say, hey, this is going to help you with your business. And that's probably why we don't have any viewers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> framing the conversation. Isn't framing the Fortunately, conversation. that's not uh, <laughs> critical to our business, but um, it actually does make me think of something that we have only recently realized, which is that um, we were not really utilizing our LinkedIn networks as much as we could be for Neither advertising stuff. And yeah. I think for a lot of things, probably I see is one of them, but definitely some of the stuff that we do. Um, I totally the LinkedIn agree. audience is more appropriate than the Facebook audience. Like, I, you know, I'm. Obviously, I'm an investor and I'm in business. I, I don't learn any business crap from Facebook. Facebook is for the that time in the morning when I don't want to get out of bed and I'm reading shitty articles and going through click holes. Like that's not, you know, well, or, or getting entertained by Facebook, a guy in a robe Facebook unpacking can something. Be right? 
yeah, that, I mean, totally. that's entertaining. Right, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, Facebook is so cluttered. That's really the answer. When you post something on Facebook, you could have 10,000 likes on your Facebook page. It's not guaranteed that any of those people see it. Right. right. And that's just the way it works. And that's the way that Facebook has set it up to make money, which they've done a beautiful job at. Shout out Sheryl Sandberg, like my hero in life, lean in. But um, yeah, they've set it up in a way that basically if you don't spend any money or you don't get a lot of very early engagement, no one's going to see that post. Right. It, just, right. it just doesn't happen. And that's the way they've set it up. So yeah, that's why Facebook is not a great outlet for a lot of things, really. Yeah. But it is good for kind of tracking news, I think. Like if you, the big news of the day I is I do see news, Facebook, I guess, on yeah, Facebook a little bit, yeah. But but not in depth like educational material on Facebook. It's more news. There's nothing in depth on the internet. Where, where are you finding in depth things on the internet? Oh, there's some really in depth things on the internet. You're just in the Maybe wrong we should spots, not go man. down this rabbit hole I guess right so. now. Yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> no, there's some great stuff. No rabbit like, holes. Yeah. Carter has a lot of great stuff. And what? You no, have the, you have the best things. I have all the best things, and my hands are big. Um, <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a clusterfuck. Um, so, okay. You invited I me. Know, I know, I know, I know. gonna happen. No, this. This is what I expected. This is what it's I fine. missed last time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was better last time because uh, I think... We had questions. Yeah, we had questions. So, um, I, I actually do... I do want to still dive into this because, yeah. you know, the purpose of... One of the purposes, one of the main purposes of this show is, is really we're talking to founders and we're trying to, you know help them out and so you know you've got how do you i guess one thing that a lot of founders say to us they look like the deer, deer in the headlights on obviously when we say like go do blog posts or go do something like go make yourself a thought leader somewhere a lot of times we get this deer in the headlights look they back. go to google and they say how do i right do a blog and they're like well what do i write about what do i say what do i talk about how do you choose you know you're talking about if you do the right thing or you do it right, it really resonates and you get this kind of virality to it. How do you make the choices of what to talk about? Yeah, you can I mean, talk those, about anything. those are all like tactical moves, right? And you sort of have to have a core piece of content before you can do any of that. I mean, I think uh, it comes down to authenticity. Um, we were talking about this a little bit before the show, but if you look at really successful people in the world, celebrities, business people, whatever, people that have gotten to the top of their game, they're extremely authentic. Um, they don't have moments where they feel like they're trying. Mm -hmm. right. It feels very effortless, and they do and say what they want to, and that just happens to be in line with what the audience also wants so to So are they uncensored in some way? They are very uncensored. Okay. Um, it, one of the great ways to look at this is like if you think about a rapper. Okay. Um, all rappers talk about how they're rich, and they get lots of girls, and you know they're the best rapper alive. Right. Everybody says they're the best rapper alive. But really only the handful that actually are rich and get girls and are the best rappers alive anybody cares about right? right and it's kind of the same thing like you have to live it you have to do it i really love cannabis i really like startups i like the challenges of early stage companies i like technology and i, I think that comes through and and the team is no different i mean our director he has a marketing agency during the day shout out jacob and latulier uh, they make Kickstarter videos and, you know, like real technology stuff, like way bigger than what I do. I'm like the little client that they have, you know. Um, Eric works in the cannabis industry. The producer, Eric, works in the cannabis. He's a consultant in the cannabis industry. Like, it, it's us, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes through. So authenticity is your kind of number one recommendation? Well, on two levels. One is it's very appealing for a following. But two, it's the only way that you ever work hard enough yeah. and do enough stuff to become successful. You have to give a fuck about what you do. Can I say fuck on this? Is that a, is that okay. It's too late. Sorry. I don't think it's going to be sensitive. Yeah, yeah, you can Sorry. say fuck. So, <laughs> Just be um, your authentic self. So, yeah. so I, I want to actually dig into that a little bit because uh, authenticity doesn't guarantee success. You might be authentic, but no one likes your authentic self. That's correct. That's totally a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you're laughing like there's, you know. Yeah, there's a lot. No of one in the room like is like that at all. No, I'm sure. No one in the room. Um, I think you also have to be really honest with yourself. Like, um, I constantly reevaluate. Does anyone care about what I'm saying? Right. You know, does anyone give a shit about this topic? And if they don't, then I'm talking about the wrong topic, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have to be interested in it to do it, but you have to be interested in it to listen to it. And it really is a two-way street there. And so I've tried to 
keep my ears open and say like, what are the issues that people care about? I mean, last week I was listening to the really intense like uh, legal discussions that you were having, which I learned a ton. But like I was thinking to myself, the people listening to this episode have a business, mm -hmm. right? Yes. They have a business in the cannabis industry and that's why they want this information. So if you're talking to those people directly, that's what you want, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you just have to know kind of where your audience is. But then I also think about it in addition to like, where's the next cohort of audience? Where's the next tranche come from, you know? Um, I'm working on a really interesting documentary right now about driving, uh, about cannabis and driving. And what I've found is this is a highly, highly divisive topic. Yep, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that think, oh, well, I didn't smoke too much today. I'm gonna drive. Right. And like, that's how it used to be with alcohol, right? Everybody's like, ah, I'm just kind of buzzed. And then they were mm -hmm. like, no, buzz driving is drunk driving. Okay. You know? And they had to like hit us over the head with that. Um, and so, yeah, that's a topic that people are just like sort of enraged about, you know? And I would love to like, want. not for this show, but like we can chat about that. We can talk we, about it. Has, well, it's it's just like it. a multifaceted, it's, it's even more complicated than it is on the surface because then it's like, you're talking about how to measure toxicity and, and impairment. and. I think, that and I think that's the problem: is people are trying to measure toxicity, not impairment, and those are two different things. Um, 100%. You can, I can pop a bunch of Vicodin and yep. be completely impaired, totally. um, hmm. which is probably also illegal, but whatever. I mean, we have um, certain yeah. uh, tests for that, right? Like roadside tests and stuff. A little bit, but they're not, you know, like, I, okay, example. There are a few industry luminaries who can down a thousand milligrams in a night and be. Pretty normal. I don't always believe them, but yeah, they say that. Oh, I've seen. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I wasn't normal. Okay. <laughs> there are people who can down a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who eat right. a lot. Of I eat a good brownie, which is 10 milligrams, and I'm like, I should not be near a car. Like, put the knives away. Like, I shouldn't. Do, like, I'm. Uh, <laughs> should probably. Do I'm that a problem, anyways. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Which I love. Delicious brownies. I like being a problem on Friday nights. It's great. But I shouldn't be driving. But there are other people who can who can eat a good brownie and like literally, it they doesn't feel they don't feel anything. They have zero impairment, um, and it's a tolerance issue. And I then they should probably wash it down with the somatic. Right. But I, but I, you do see plug. Yeah, that was a that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. But but you do see I think in cannabis and again I don't know that there's been studies on this, but it seems like the variance in tolerance in cannabis is much higher than that in alcohol. Ooh, I don't know about that. Oh. There's some drunks out there, man. I could be wrong. Like at work, you know. But it seems like judges it's stuff. much. Yeah, you know. But the but I think they're impaired. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely impaired. right. But I think the variance um, for impairment versus dosage is higher in in cannabis. So whereas you know, very few people who have six shots of tequila in a row and get in a car should like can actually function. Yeah. Right. But there are people who could have what I would consider the equivalent of that in cannabis and who don't even feel it. Um, I'm a highly functional stoner. Absolutely. I mean, I smoke Are a you stoned right now? I, yeah, yeah, before yeah, I right. came on the show, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're on a weed show. Like, how am I going to do a weed show without some weed, you know? Like, this, this hey, isn't no, CNN, just, you know? Yeah. No offense. I, <laughs> I would be offended if we were <laughs> CNN, by the way, just to be clear. We have more viewers than and CNN, by the way, Jesus Christ. I would be high on CNN, by the way. That, again, about like, oh yeah, authenticity. Like, cannabis in places yeah. that you're not supposed to have cannabis, like that's like yeah. top of the list. Yeah, no, that, that I like that. Yeah. <laughs> what was the question again? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> driving, driving. <laughs> so uh, I'm a little bit of a hypocrite. I don't drive at all. I don't. I live in San Francisco. I take Lyft and Uber everywhere, and so I don't drive. So I admit that I don't feel the pain of this as much as most people. Um, but with that said, um, it's really dangerous. I think. Yeah, I think it's I mean, really it dangerous. Yeah. I think driving completely sober is really dangerous. I think people that smoke cigarettes or do their makeup or, you know, text while they're driving, it's really dangerous. We don't need to add anything else to it. Um, and I know Fair. for a lot of people that's disrupting their lifestyle and, you know, changing the way they've done it for 20 years. And I drive 80 miles an hour from Sonoma to San Diego and I'm fine. But I don't think that's the message that we should give to other people. I think that's really dangerous. I think it's a really dangerous idea. I, I think I could get behind the idea of just kind of saying, look, it's dangerous generally, and you probably shouldn't do anything that adds risk to driving. I mean, we're but, gonna have but that does include vehicles. texting. Yeah, texting say, yeah, that's the thing. Five right? years, hopefully. Yeah. Right? So yeah. this is going to be a non-issue. The interesting thing about autonomous vehicles is like, what happens to insurance and stuff like that? Like, it's oh, a massive yeah. no, industry. Oh yeah, no, super cool, right? Because you you could totally imagine like 
insurance rates. Well, who do you think is going to be yeah. lobbying the cities to have rules against autonomous driving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, That'll be a fun battle. I don't know, because if you had a... I, I, so I was hearing this guy talk about AI this morning generally, which is kind of related, and, and they were mentioning how Elon Musk is like, oh, the first person in the AI is going to like rule the world and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I don't think that's true. I think with AI, just like autonomous driving is an incremental thing. And I think insurance companies, you know, autonomous driving starts with controlled parameters of driving and like making you safer, but you still have some control. And if I were an insurance company, I'd be like, I will lower your rates if you if you use this, if I'm hooked into your system and see that you've got this AI controlling your safety and it reduces your accident level, I'm going to reduce your premiums. So yeah. I, I think I think that will happen. And eventually, obviously, if it's completely AI controlled, insurance probably becomes a, a relationship between the, the business, car company uh, yeah. and the insurance provider, not the person, because it's not you no longer have control. I read an article that was really interesting about sort of that topic and whether or not the individual vehicles need to be insured or whether like the platform, like the software as a whole is gonna be insured. Right. Basically that's the driver, right? Right. And the debate was like, okay, but if you only have us insure the platform, the software, it's drastically less expensive than each individual vehicle. Yeah. So that's kind of the fight in the Well, and this is that, so we also mm. had this conversation with Adam the other day, right? That the perfect business for Tesla to do is start insuring the cars because they have all data on everything. So they should start offering car insurance because they have data on everything and they're starting to do self-driving mm -hmm. um so they're actually the perfect insurer because they know the risk better than anyone else does um and can probably offer better premiums this is a great discussion i assume that you know it's, it's a good discussion it's, it's unrelated to what we're doing <laughs> oh, yeah. on fleet which we can talk about which sure would you like to talk about to on the fleet? cannabis industry a little bit would, uh shout out on fleet i'm not there right now because i'm here but on right. fleet's super interesting because it's like a backbone of it's a quiet backbone of the industry. I, a really reporter like called me recently. Go to yeah. uh, logistics platform in right. the cannabis industry. Basically, everybody, with the exception of Ease, uh, which started building their stuff prior to us getting it in front of them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everybody else in the industry uses OnFleet and sort of quietly, which is kind of a cool, like mysterious. Sure. Vibe to Sorry, it. I just plugged you on a on a news article that was. No, 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 so I someone called no, no, me. No, it's not intentionally you, quietly. No. It's just it's very much like a B two B product, right. there's the, um, and there's no and risk so for you guys. It's just software, right? Basically, right? It's I just mean, software, and what most people in the cannabis industry don't realize is that it's about twenty percent of OnFleet's business, give or take. Oh, so there's like a massive other side to OnFleet. We deliver prepared meals and restaurant food and alcohol and laundry and all these other things, right? right. So um, cannabis is a really cool thing that uh, we support. We have so many dispensaries, <laughs> like literally once a day, there's a new dispensary uh, customer yeah. that uses OnFleet. Um, and I mean, maybe I should explain a little bit, but basically it's yeah, tracking. Yeah, I was gonna say, why don't you tell me yeah, what yeah. it is? So it's, uh, it's an operating system, as we're calling it now, uh, for delivery. Mm -hmm. So it's a dispatcher dashboard uh, where you can track all your drivers, plan routes, get ETAs, that kind of thing. There's a driver app where it takes the driver through that route. They can get directions, communicate with the dispatcher, that kind of thing. There's also a customer engagement portion, which probably everybody has seen if they order uh, cannabis in the Bay Area, or it's like, you know, whatever, Green Cross is on the way, check mm -hmm. your ETA, there's a tracking link, go ahead, you know. Right. Um, a big part of that reason is the partnership that we have with Meadow, um, which kind of brings me back to David Hua, yeah. which is all yeah. sort of, my life is all very intermingled that way. Um, but yeah, if you sign up for Meadow as a dispensary, OnFleet comes with it. Right. Um, so if you want to do delivery, that's the logistics platform that they've gone with. It also happens to be the best one. I'm not biased in any way. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. But um, yeah, on fleet dope. It is the default standard, though. I mean, even I it know absolutely that. absolutely is. Yeah. 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 Um, we're just hoping that the cannabis industry explodes and can become a much bigger, well, still maybe 20%, but a much right. bigger 20% of the pie, right? right. Well, I mean, um, we, we've like reviewed probably three applications in the last month, and part of the pitch was you know, an on fleet integration, yeah. like yeah. right there on the deck. Um, that's really cool. We've also talked about in the future of like how you may have to certify a dispatcher or a driver in OnFleet, mm. which is like a whole additional sort of revenue stream that could happen. That's really interesting. Do you have any comments on kind of the the latest draft slash almost not draft anymore regulations mm -hmm. um, for for delivery? Because I know um, 
it is causing people in the industry some heartburn, and there have been uh, there's there's not a lot of clarity about what's what's going to happen. I know you guys are kind of protected legally from whatever happens, but yeah, I mean we use like the YouTube defense, right? Like whatever you use it for is like, yeah, yeah, not our business. Yeah. But um, yeah, on a I guess we'll switch back to the investing in cannabis hat sure. here. I'll take my on fleet hat off here. Um, I think largely it's undecided still. There's still a lot going on in mm -hmm. individual counties and cities all over the place. I've had the privilege to meet with sort of like the cannabis task force leader in a couple different cities and discuss on fleet and they asked like about the future and there's a wide range of enforcement and guidelines and what you need to have in the car. You know, do you need to have a, a lockbox? You need to have a camera? You know, do you need to report the tracking to the government, you know, to the city or county, right. which then opens up all these questions about whether there should be a back door and how much access should they have and like all these sort of bigger issues when it's like, all I did was order an eighth, you know, like it wasn't right. like a big deal yeah. and now you're making it a big deal, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know if you know, but um, bureaucrats know best how to organize every industry. Uh, down to the minute detail, so and I to, think you should just stop bitching about and it. And to get their their cut. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I wanted. This is a horrible segue, but it's something that I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to kind of switch to. Um, when you release a video for either IC or um, or Infused, what is the process for getting view views and engagement other than the inherent like topic and production value and everything yeah, else. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, what's, the, what's the release process that kind of maximizes your virality? Yeah, I mean, it's something we play with a lot, right? I mean, this is all experiments. Um, what we find is that one single post of anything does not do that well. Hmm. Um, basically, you have to prepare for two, three days a week. I mean, you guys did that. You know, you were like, Brandon's coming on the show, all this stuff. That stuff matters. We've only started to like, do it helps. a little bit better, yeah. but I don't think we do it That stuff super matters. Because well. yeah. if you think about, people have this idea that they post something and like, everybody's going to see it. Right. Yay. You know, like, make sure it's spelled right. And like, <laughs> what matters much less than that is like, just do it more because you don't know which one of those posts is going to hit who. Mm, right. um, the other way to do it is to sort of find yourself in these little communities. So Facebook groups are incredible. Mm. They are these basically vacuums on Facebook where they declutter all the noise. So anything that's posted inside of a group, the likelihood that everybody in that group sees it is very high. Interesting. In fact, unless you change your settings on Facebook, every time someone updates something in that group, you get a notification about it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's been a really, really big <laughs> learning for us. Um, and there's all these groups, like right? there's seniors in cannabis groups, there's like moms against driving high groups, you know, everything. everything yeah. And some of them have like 100,000 people. You know? yeah, wow. And so, and, and it's not like everybody in the group necessarily sees sure, it. Sure, but you have a much like higher likelihood. Right. It's also sort of a credibility thing. Many of these groups you have to be accepted into. Right. So once the admin of that page is saying, okay, they can post in here now, they're sort of condoning it, right? They're, yep. they're sort of promoting yep. it in their own way. So that's a really big deal. Um, we try all kinds of things, you know, Reddit trees, all these smaller networks that you wouldn't think of. You know, everybody's like, oh, I'm gonna post it on Instagram, share it to Facebook, and then that's all they do, right? And that's what I do when I'm lazy, or like if I'm, you know, just like fucking around, but if you really wanna get engagement, um, that's what you have to do. The other thing we do is we tag a lot of people Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people think it looks lame or they're lazy or they're bored, whatever. But like if there's, you're talking about six people in the video, tag all six yeah. of them, you know? Yeah. Um, hashtags are a big deal, right? Choosing the right hashtags are a big deal. Um, there are many products out there, most of which escape me at the moment, where you can look at the top hashtags trending by topic. So like just because the topic is cannabis, like there's a big uh, hashtag on Instagram called Hi Larry Us, which is like hilarious. But like, oh. if you didn't know that, you, <laughs> you would, would never, never think of yeah, that. Right. Never, yeah, never, ever, yeah. you know? Um, and so yeah, there's a lot of those little hacks, but I mean, the truth is there's no like, hack. <laughs> you have right. to like explore and find what's right for your audience and try a lot of things and do it a lot. You know, so the interesting, the, well, something that struck me that was interesting, uh, and I think it was because I realized I'm guilty of this uh, logical fallacy, right, is, there's this assumption that when I post a, a, let's say it's just a tweet. I post a tweet talking about- you tweet, by the way? I do. We basically like abandon Twitter, I guess. I do tweet, I'm thinking <laughs> about abandoning Twitter, but I'm, that's, I'm there right now. Yeah. So- uh, I read it still sometimes, yeah. but yeah. 
if you, we post a, a tweet about like, oh, Brandon David's going to be on the show this week, tune in and there's a link, right? Um, and then there's a tweet like, here's the show, right? Like here, here it is now, like the actual content. Um, there's this intuitive idea for me that like the content is like we'll get more like that that tweet or that Facebook post that will get more views because that's where the meat is. But actually, everything gets the same amount of views. So tweeting once or posting another Facebook about your thing doubles the amount of the, the probability that someone will see it. Absolutely. Right? The first time. And then after that, there's virality. But And you have um, to think about the way people like to consume stuff, right? Um, people want to know what it was about and be able to talk about it without actually taking the time to consume it. Mm. Right. That's basically the headline society that we live in today. Right. And everybody's guilty of it. I mean, I, I saw a few different Canvas headlines today. I didn't read the articles. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm busy. You know, I'm, right. I'm doing whatever, you know. So and everybody is like, go that. be on a podcast. So <laughs> if you can give somebody in the first 30 seconds or minute what you're doing and it's engaging, basically everything after that almost doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. I know that's terrible. No, no, I, um, I get but that. Yeah, that's yeah. really the world that we live in unless and this is another good segue, you make yourself on a bigger platform. So if you have a Netflix deal, or if you have an Amazon deal, if you can get off people's computers and phones and onto their TV, the games change, the game right. changes. Because people sit down and they say, okay, I have 30 minutes or an hour on the couch right now, what am I gonna watch? Right. It's a very different experience mm. than like flipping open Facebook. Right, you're not gonna, you don't generally surf two minutes on Netflix and then switch to another show or whatever. You I could, mean, I'm high, you high all the time, so yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. But, no, but I so don't mean you. Is that a goal yeah. for Infused? To uh, we've had some conversations yeah. with different platforms like that. Um, I mean, to be frank, they basically all require me to not work at OnFleet anymore. And that's just not something I'm willing to do. Right. I just love OnFleet. It's an awesome company. I'm challenged every day. I love them. You know, they're super. It's a weird requirement. Why, why do they care? It's just about time, you know, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. Like, if they were like, oh, let's shoot a pilot for something for three weeks in LA, and I'm like, well, you know, I got a call. <laughs> right, yeah, I can't do that. that yeah, yeah. Doesn't, fair it enough. Doesn't really fair work enough. that way, you know. Um, but yeah, we've had some of those conversations about syndication. We did a partnership with Herb mm -hmm. uh, a little earlier in the year. That turned out really well. Um, you know, ha I have some videos like half a million views. On I was going to say, they have like a that. wide uh, viewership. Big, big audience, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And they do all the short form stuff. Right. Like the stuff that I did was out of the box for them. Um, like they do all just like, I'm gonna hit this 10 gram uh, dab right now, you know, or like watch. And it's me a get two minute high video in the end. Play or, the yeah. piano, you okay. know. Like it's all just like very approachable kind of stuff, which maybe is a lesson too. Maybe I, I realize we've uh, neglected the the studio audience. Yeah, it's 10:50. Um, who's now probably infused with anger? We didn't talk about disjointed yet, though. No. Ugh. I heard it wasn't trying. any good. Is that? Um, it's horrible, I didn't watch it. But okay. um, that doesn't mean we can't talk about it. Right? With that, this <laughs> yeah, more reasons. Crush. Can you just <laughs> say one horrible thing about it, and then we'll ask for a question? There's a laugh track. Oh, oh my no. god! All right, studio. Really? Anyone have questions for Brandon? <laughs> yeah. Look at the studio audience. Yeah, I know. Beautiful. There's like three. Beautiful. <laughs> but there's there's like twice as many over there. <laughs> twice. So. I was thinking maybe three times, yeah. four times as many. They're actually there. like backstage. This yeah. is like oh, that's right. Yeah, that's here. yeah. They paid for these seats. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, Brandon. My name is Rich. Um, just okay. a quick question. Thank you for talking about the Facebook groups and everything. Um, we're in the process of building what, in essence, boils down to a modern day country club. Uh, based around cannabis, but you do the, the same, Lanai Club, right? Exactly. Um, Ooh, look at that. Based around uh, that same work and being in the community, also bringing cannabis to Alameda, and being trying to work with the city on that. And we're getting a lot. Of, I'm getting a lot of interviews and things like that, where I purposely don't mention the Lanai Club when they ask, you know, about my background. And the reason we do that is, as a private group that's being built basically through underground marketing techniques. It doesn't seem that we want to bring it to the forefront in a mainstream way, nor confuse the issue about cannabis and legality. So my question basically comes down to, where's that fine line in your opinion? Like any mention of the Lanai Club and what we're doing opens the conversation. However, much like some of the restaurants locally, you look for their menu and they're like, no, we don't do that. 
We don't put our hours up. It's almost like if you're cool enough to find out about us, you can eat here. This is such an urban question, but. <laughs> this is a very okay. urban question. I'm a very <laughs> urban individual. Um, you know, I don't think in the cannabis industry we have the luxury of being silent yet. I think that brands are really still fighting to be known at all and mm -hmm. to get their portion of it. Well, in iClub, if I'm correct, like you have to be invited, right? Like it's a private only exactly. sort of thing. Got it. Like okay. That. Yeah. So maybe that's a little different model. I mean, you're not trying to sell like a big brand. Um, but in general, anytime you get a chance to plug something, I take the opportunity. You know, yeah. I mean, go to infuseshow.com. You can watch all the stuff that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. And um, you're welcome. Right, yeah. Gateway, thank you for recognizing and throwing up on iClub. Great question. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, any other questions, Jesse? Sure, yeah. Um, just a quick one about uh, social media um, and just your relationship with it from the beginning, like when you first started out with Facebook, maybe in college or whatever it was, and then moved on to Twitter, later dropping it for whatever reason. Um, you know, what's your There's attitude nobody, towards it? Nobody reads it, that's why. And um, uh, <laughs> what's my attitude towards social media? Yeah. I'm obsessed with social media. That won't come as a surprise to anybody here. Uh, every morning I wake up, I watch the entirety of my Instagram stories before I do anything. So wow. Um, wow. that says something about me. Uh, maybe I should be like reading the news or like learning a computer language or something, but I'm watching Instagram stories uh, for better <laughs> or worse. Um, no, I'm pretty obsessed with it. You know, I, I like social media a lot. Um, the only reason that I don't social media any even more is because I'm often in conversations or on the phone where they'd be very upset if I was, you know, talking about what we were talking about. So mm -hmm. I try to draw the line there. I also try to make a distinction about the hour of the day. So if I'm in like a party environment and it's, you know, 10 p.m. at night on a Friday, I try to be conscious of the people around that may like have some dignity or shame left. I'm like, you know, I'm all right. the way out there, right? But right. like some people are like, well, what if like Child Protective Services calls me, you know? Like right. They, mm. They've got shit, you know? Do you use Snapchat at all? Or? Uh, I I consume Snapchat chat a lot. Instagram stories are just way better made. Yeah. Um, it's just a better product. I'm asking because I feel, I feel like Instagram has is is destroying Snapchat slowly and... Destroying is a strong word. Um, yes, I think is. that Snapchat is going to have a similar problem to Twitter, actually, hmm. in that... Uh, Fuck, Jack Dorsey's not going to ruin that, too, is he? <laughs> yeah, he's the new CEO. Didn't, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I just think um, they're going to have growth issues. Okay. I think, you know, everybody that is in, like, the half a generation below me, like, I have little sisters, and they're obsessed with Snapchat. Mm -hmm. yeah. But already the people that are my age and are, like, in their mid-20s, they have transitioned to Instagram a lot. Yeah, people uh, didn't don't stay with it. Like Facebook, they kind of stayed with and until parents eventually. And now, now it's not cool. But well, young people see Facebook like their email, right? Like an inbox, like something right. they have to check. It's not like for fun anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, hmm. But yeah, I think uh, Instagram will win largely because of Facebook. Right. Right. I mean, uh, I don't know how many. They can burn some cash, that's for sure. And Facebook has what, like a billion users or something? Two billion. Like two yeah, billion more than that. Yeah, one point yeah, something. Yeah. So like the cost of acquisition, if we want to talk in technology terms, to acquire or to transfer a Facebook user mm -hmm. into an Instagram user, drastically cheaper than Snapchat, you know, uh, acquiring someone organically, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think in the end, that's just where it heads. And yeah, maybe Instagram is going to be more and more of our parents as time goes on, but like, there'll be something new. You know? Sure. It yeah. won't be Periscope though. They they had a shot. No, no, no. It won't be yeah. Periscope. Yeah. You brought up Periscope. I only brought it up because uh, like it does it does happen on Twitter. Like some people have Periscopes and sometimes some Twitter bought yeah. Periscope. I know. I, I know. I liked Periscope. I, I used mm -hmm. it for a while. Um, the Snapchat, and Instagram stories, just crushed. yeah, no, it's, it's just like, not. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions for for Brandon? I was gonna ask uh, about uh, Snapchat. I've been using Snapchat as a way to kind of push myself into the blog world, um, and then kind of as a way to like you were saying earlier, like test myself so I can do all the shitty parts at the beginning and then kind of build on from there. Yep. Um, and my question was going to be, should I stay on Snapchat or should I slowly transition? I think you just answered saying that it might be a good idea to transition to something like uh, Instagram or... Look, if you have the platform. time and the desire, you should do every social network you can think of um, because you're just going to gain more. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about LinkedIn. I don't do a lot on LinkedIn, but I'm sure if I did, it, the channel would grow. Yeah. Um, so... That's to say maybe you shouldn't focus on Snapchat, but if you have the time and the desire to do Snapchat in addition, yes. The one thing that I'll caution about you, uh, you to do is that most people, when they use social media, they make one piece of content and then they share it to every other platform. Mm -hmm. right. You really shouldn't do that. You should create uh, original content, 
based on the format that you're creating it for. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody knows when they see a Snapchat story or a, a Facebook post right. that was designed for another platform and then it kind of comes out shitty, you know? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do that all the time, it's great. Hey, go ahead, man. Uh, on that point. You just made, um, we're kind of building our social media presence on a couple different fronts. And when you create content like a blog or a vlog or just an Instagram post that has an awesome caption, how do you cross promote that information across the different platforms to pull people in one certain direction? Maybe you want to pull them all toward your, your website where it's like a hub for everything. Do you have any techniques or strategies for how you approach that? I mean, there's no like one single answer. That, that's the first thing that I'll say. And it is dependent on platform. Um, but I often do things that aren't directly in promotion of anything. Um, I feel that if people buy into who you are and what you're about, they will take the time to mm -hmm. go look at whatever else there is, you know? And I see that all the time. Um, when we have a big splash, a new YouTube documentary or something that does really well on Facebook, and then the views of all the other stuff goes up, right? Because people are looking for good content. Mm -hmm. They're just busy and they don't have the time or, you know, they don't know how to find it or whatever. But I think that's really the answer is, people know when you're promoting stuff, um, always. And just by you putting your face up there, you're promoting something. And so you don't really have to hit people over the head with it all the time. Um, but as far as cross promotion, I mean, I'm still a work in progress too. Like I, I don't want to stand here and say like, I have all the answers, like I'm some master, you know, like we've just experimented Give with Give us a lot the answers, like, Brandon. We make this really cool content. We want as much people, as many people to see as possible. And that's like why we kind of keep experimenting. Yeah. All right. So last question, because we're over a little bit. We can um, keep going. I mean, well, I think uh, actually Wirecast, or Facebook, someone stops us after about an hour of oh, content. Okay. So um, you're a much better interviewer than we are, which, uh, which is uh, great. What didn't we ask that we should have asked? Oh, good question. Um, you didn't ask any like emotional questions. Oh, and that's yeah, what, I don't have emotions. That's, what that's I do my big lot. problem. I know you're a cold-hearted bastard. Carter, <laughs> I love you anyway. Um, no, you have to sort of take a step back and get away from the tactical. Mm. Um, and what I ask people a lot is like, you've been here since the beginning, right? You were an uh, activist in 1996 and you marched and everything on the cusp of legalization. When you could walk into a store and buy weed, anybody can buy weed. How does it make you feel? Interesting. And then people... First of all, they stop for a second because that's not an answer that they have. Right. Right. Go. Yeah. Um, and what you're trying to get, again, is something authentic, you know, something that's a little more emotional, you know, because that's how people connect with it, too. Interesting. So, Brandon. Yeah. Um, go so, ahead. so, Ben, do you have a question for Brandon? Let's do it. Being a longtime consumer of cannabis and uh, having seen the evolution of an industry, how does it make you <laughs> feel to be on the cusp of legalization where we can walk into a store and potentially just purchase cannabis with an ID. It's I an think awesome I feel really idea. lucky, honestly. I feel lucky to live in this time period. I went to college uh, in University of Arizona some time ago, like 10 years, eight, eight years ago. And um, it was like a big no-no, right? Like we were like smoking weed in our frat house, like under wraps, like, oh man, don't let anybody in, like make sure the smell doesn't get out. And so to be here now, like, on a business program about cannabis where like people actually care what I have to say about weed. Like that's, I feel really lucky to sort of have a part in that, not just professionally, but just like to live in this time and this environment. You know? yeah. It's cool. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. great. Well, we're yeah. lucky to have you. It was a good tip, right? <laughs> that was awesome. It was a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, <laughs> we'll just cut off just the rest of the show. Yeah. We'll just, just do that. that you part. could, you just, just do that. That's part. our short form content. Awesome um, guys. Thank you for coming, man. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. We didn't get to talk too much about you guys. I had some questions. For That's you. right. We'll I mean, do it again. We'll do it again. We talk about ourselves enough. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks for coming. How can people get in contact with you or see your stuff or whatever? Infuseshow.com. Investing in cannabis lives at infuseshow.com. You can go to investingcannabis.tv as well, but it all goes back to infuseshow.com. Uh, that's where the documentaries are. You can follow us on every platform that we already talked about. Uh, we do well on just the general Apple podcast as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to watch Robe Talk, you kind of got to catch it sometimes. It's Robe like an inspiration. Talk. <laughs> Robe talk, rope talk, rope talk. Mm -hmm. you ha it's sort of like an inspirational thing. It's not like on a set schedule or anything. So you kind of got to catch it. That's like generally just mm. in the in the. I've caught it before. Now, I now feel lucky because I didn't know that I was catching it. It's like a pop-up shop. It's like lucky a pop -up was not the word I was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
It's been awesome to be here, guys. I was looking at the old YouTube that we did. Uh, <laughs> 55 weeks ago. Not episode three, but oh. the Investing in Cannabis oh, episode mm-hmm. that we did. Yeah. And specifically you, Ben, like I listened to the first couple questions and you were like a little nervous and a little hesitant. And like, I don't know how to talk about this and <laughs> I don't know how to talk to you and like all this stuff. And just watching what you guys have done, mm-hmm. speaking at things and hosting this show every day, like congratulations to you guys. Like, you're Thanks, man. blowing Thanks, man. up. Yeah, no, thank Appreciate you. And, uh, you know, you've been there from the beginning, and we love you, man. You're, you're part of the family. So thanks yeah. for coming in. We're going to wind it There down was no emotions in that screen. content, though, just to be <laughs> clear. Uh, join us next week. Where am I looking? Here. Join us next week, Friday, 10 a.m. We have Marshall Hayner from Metal, yes. who, will, who will be wow. a billionaire by next week. That's the goal. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Marshall will be on the when show. When you write your memoirs. That's going to be the most interesting. Honestly, the, I told it Diane is. last night the the thing that I am most proud about, which is a minor thing, is like I named metal. Well, and I'll be no one liked the name at the time, and people still don't like it probably, but I don't care. It's fucking blowing up, and I'll be like, yeah, 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 yeah we named metal. That's dope. Yeah. All right. So, there's something. But yeah, I'm, no, Marshall's There's something be, I'm more proud of, but that'll come next I'm week. Ki- I'm kidding. That's I mean, not you my just most had proud a kid, thing, right? Yeah. Like, hopefully that's oh, the Oh, well, answer. there's that too. <laughs> he means business wise. He means business wise. My wife's going to kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, join us next week, 10 a.m. Uh, follow us on, uh, I don't know, go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, all the stuff. All the things. Yeah. Do it. See you next week. See you guys. <laughs> yeah.